Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm on part two today. First part was beefing up the transfer case. Second part is the doubler. So real quick, the kit that I bought came with this aluminum plate, threaded. This plate, chromoly shaft, clocking ring. I need this clocking ring because of the extra length of the drivetrain. That second transfer case is gonna push it back. Uh, this drive shaft right here so in order to prevent my drive shaft from hitting the cross member i'm gonna have to clock this t case up a little bit so i have enough clearance for it so clocking ring is installed as you can see that plate has already been welded on and back up a minute so typically your case would look like this minus the plate so as you can see i've already cut that plate to cut this section off had a buddy of mine weld up the plate he did an awesome job on it not worried about it leaking i have seen where people put jb weld on it seal it up that way hey it works i don't think it's going to be as strong as this method here so if you can kind of picture that half of your teak case you can kind of see where i put a sharpie marker on it as a guide i used a bandsaw just chop that right off it cut like butter and so you end up with this section gone and that half the case so as of right now of course the case is gutted welded up cleaned up and now I'm ready to reassemble it so first thing I'm gonna do is put in my new six gear planetary just like the last video I upgraded from the three gear planetary to the six so twice as much much contact surface on this particular setup here for that low range so that'll go in put on uh, everything else and we'll get to it so if you've seen my first video about the transfer case rebuild you've seen how I swapped out my three gear planetary for the six gear but a quick summary what you would do pop out this little clip right here see how it's coming free that will remove this retainer you pull out the input and you do the reverse just put it into here so make sure you get the right cut of gear I ordered the wrong one because I was told wrong um, so I do have an extra one now but anyways I'm not bitter <laughs> so now that this is in I've got it uh, slightly oiled up drop it into place here and we're good to go so now next up I need to put on the c-clip hold it in place with my snap ring and then I can put on the new seal for that input just about got it back on all right clipped in now so now i can flip this upside down or right side up however you want to look at it so i already put my rtv on it replace the seal line that up with that oiler port slide it on line up the mounting holes and then put in your four bolts, 10 millimeter socket works great for it. Done, okay, so that's back in place. Inputs on, spins freely, flip it back over. So next up, we need to get low range fork in, and then here's that chromoly shaft. So that would slide into place like so. From that point, you would put this guide rod down, get it lined up, and pop there. And this would control it from shifting. It would move this fork, the lower fork, up and down to where it's riding on high neutral or uh, low gear what we need to do next is modify the shift fork so with this kit we basically need this shaft right here without this fork on it so we'll end up having to tap this out pull that pin out remove this fork and then cut down the shaft there's two thoughts on it Either you cut it flat to where it's 
right with the surface of this plate so that this flat surface of the shaft is riding on it, preventing it from shifting around. I think I'm going to go that route. My other option that I was thinking about is maybe mill this out just a little bit to where it's the same size of this shaft so it'll recess into it and that'll hold it. But I think, talking with the manufacturer, they said as long as that bore down there is tight and you get this snug up against this plate, it should be fine. Their older kit, you would chop this off and they had the section here, a hole in it, where you would drill and tap this, bolt it to that. But I saw a lot of issues with it as far as it leaking. And also keep in mind, if you're trying to tighten the screw down here or bolt down here, it's really difficult to hold that in place while you're doing it. So at any rate, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this fork from it and then like I said, just chop it off as flat as I can with this plate here to hold it firm. So we'll get to that now. All right, so I got that pin popped out. Um, again, I do have multiple of these, multiple parts. So just to show you, just tap that out with a hammer and a punch. And uh, that's what it reveals. Fork comes off and there's the shaft. So like I said, slide that down in, make sure it's all the way down. And then I just ended up taking a flat bar, straight edge, and right there, I can see my, my mark on it. So I'm gonna cut it, of course, long, you know, measure twice, cut once. Well, I'm gonna cut a couple different times to just slowly shave it off until I get as tight of a fit as I can against that plate. And then I'm gonna save this one for, you know, plan B, if I do have to mill out that plate and recess it into it. So I guess I also have the luxury of if I do cut it too short, I can always restart over again and do it with that one. So next up, we'll chop that down and get this plate to, to sit on there like it should. To the chop saw. All right, so I got it cut down ground smooth took off the burrs it's cooled down obviously i'm touching it now this should slide into place good and then let's do a little check get straight edge out just run it across look at that right there perfect just barely riding on it if it gets caught on it there then you've got an issue it's not going to press down and seal all the way so now that that's in place let's put this on do test run. All right, so I got it all kind of hand tight bolting back together. And as I cycle my shifter, we should get movement out of this fork. So right now we're in two high, rotate up once, that's four high, neutral, four low. So you can see the shift fork as I go through the range. So right now, I left it in furthest out position, which is gonna be your, your four low. We get the really low crawl ratio with that 2.7 to one. So you can kind of see it's rotating in a different, if you can see my hand versus the shaft. And then we'll go into neutral, no rotation. So we got our four high. Now it's in sync with the way the input is rotating. And then of course two. So really, since I don't have my front input on this, unless doubler case, this is just two, two, neutral, and then two low. Beautiful. So working out good. Now all we have to do is basically hook it up to the T-case. See what this monster looks like all put together. All right, so I got the plate on hand tight. Let's uh, assemble this thing and see what it looks like all put together. I did clock this just one tick from where the stock location would, again, just to give me some clearance for the drive shaft. Pop this guy on. Ooh, that's a pig.
Oh lord. Check that out. Alright, so there's one to one. One to one. Let's do two high, neutral, low. So there's first low. And this is still a neutral, it's just spinning. Alright, and then let's go four high, neutral. There's neutral. And then there's low. Oh man. Check that out. Slow, slow crawl ratio. So those of you that are curious, looks like we're just under eight inches as far as the plate clocking ring in the front half goes. And then if we were to measure the hole portion, just under 25. And that is, keep in mind with the slip yoke eliminator installed, you can get a shorter slip yoke eliminator. This is just what I had handy. I got a good deal on it. So I went with it. Uh, the length is not too much of concern with me with the Comanche. It's got a longer wheelbase than most Jeeps. So, but if you got something shorter, you might want to go with that super short. And you'd probably be within inches of what the original case was without the slip yoke eliminator on it. So there it is. Now the next step is to figure out how to get this inside of the vehicle. So I'm going to have to make room in the transmission tunnel area to make room for that. Where this is going to go is, well, where the rear of the seat is right now. So I'm going to have to do some surgery, hammers, make room, figure out what my clocking position is going to be to make sure that I clear my front drive shaft over that cross member. So that's it guys so i appreciate it i hope you guys enjoyed it i'm super stoked i think this is going to be awesome out on the trail um look forward to using it and i'll give you some videos once i get it up and running and then i'm also going to do some videos on mounting it i'll have to do a second cross member or maybe just one cross member modify the one that's there and then shift linkages so it's going to be the next thing so stick around